Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spada, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to edit, annotate, and convert PDF files. Before we get into today's video, I wanna take a quick second to tell you about a tool I've been using to edit videos called Filmora. As many of you know, before I worked in education, I used to edit commercials professionally, and so I get a little geeked out when it comes to editing, and there's a few features in Filmora that I think you're really going to like. The first is it's very easy to use, so whether you have lots of experience editing or you're editing for the first time, Filmora allows you to simply click and drag videos into the timeline. So once my video is down in the timeline, I can just click anywhere I'd like to trim the video so I can either trim it from the end by just clicking and moving it in or I can bring the scissors click on the scissors and you'll notice it cuts the video so if you just need a very simple trimming you can do that in a matter of seconds but if you wanted to add in some effects really spice up your video it's very easy to do that as well the other thing I really like for educators is it's very easy to create your own screencasts. All you have to do is click where it says record. You can go to from webcam. You'll see it pops up with the ability to capture video. I can click on the record button. I can record my lesson here. Once I'm done, I can just press stop. Go to OK. And it will put it right in my media bin. I can click and drag that down. And then once you're done, you can just click on export and you can be done. Or if you want to add in some fun effects, you can right click, go to where it says green screen. And you notice I have the green screen behind me and I can just kind of play with the settings and I can do green screen effects. Or if you don't have a green screen, you can find some of the fun overlays to give your videos a really fun look. Let's try film. Let's see what that looks like. Just simply click and drag put my video in and you can see it just gives your video um, a real fun flair to it and when students have been watching videos all day it'll make yours stand out a little bit more than everybody else's and again you can kind of play around with some of these and just find something that fits your style and it will just help keep your students engaged while watching your screencasts so with all these options, you can see why I'm such a big Filmora fan. You can check it out yourself at wondershare.filmora.com. One of the tools that I've been using recently is something called Wondershare PDF Element. PDF Element allows you to either create your own PDF forms and documents or take an existing PDF and annotate, edit, or convert them. And when I say convert, I mean in a very reliable manner. Um, to the point where it's the most reliable PDF converter I've ever used. And it's very easy to use. I'm going to show you how it works because I've tried other PDF converters and nothing has ever reliably taken a PDF and allowed me to change it either in the PDF or in a Word document. So I'm going to show you how to use uh, Wondershare PDF Element. So today for this tutorial, I'm going to use a PDF that I found online. It's a really good quiz for a story called Warriors Don't Cry. Now, I know all of us educators have found materials online that we've really liked, but we want to tweak sometimes. So I'm going to show you how I can take something that somebody else created um, that I downloaded as a PDF and customize it as my own. Because you can use this for so many different things. You can use this for PDF stories that you found that you want to annotate or something that you want to change. So let me just show you up here where it says home. One of the first tools you have access to is something that says edit text and image objects. Now when I click on that, you'll see it creates different text box. And it's as easy as clicking on the text box that I'd like to make changes to. And I can either add my own text, I can delete text. So if I wanted to take out, say this word, I can just press backspace or delete and it removes it. I can type in anything else that I want. And you can see it's as easy as just typing. Just like I would with a Word document, I can change the text that I want. Um, so let's say I wanted to change the font. I can go over here to where it says properties. And I can change the font. And you notice it changes it. And it kind of moved... The, uh, the formatting around a little bit, but you can just change that back yourself. 
Uh, you can also change anything from bolding to italics. You can justify. Uh, essentially, anything you can do in a Word or Google Doc, you can do right in uh, PDF Wondershare Element in this uh, option to edit the text. You can also add in your own images. You can create your own text box. You can add in hyperlinks. You can change the background. And there's just a whole bunch of other options that allow you to customize the text that you're looking at in your PDF. There's also an option to create your own interactive forms. So by clicking up on the form tab, uh, there's several different options to create interactive questions so that students can click um, either on a multiple choice or they can click on text boxes and respond. So you can take an existing PDF and create your own interactive form or you can just create an interactive form from scratch. So now let's say we found a story online and we downloaded it as a PDF. PDF Element allows you to annotate this so that you can model certain things for your students. So for instance, when I go up to where it says comment, I can click on this T to highlight. So if I wanted to show the students something, I can highlight and then select the color. And it's that easy. You can see it highlights right away. Uh, again, I'm just gonna highlight random things so you can see how easy that is. I can also strike through text. So if I wanted to do that, again, it's just click. And then once I let go, it'll cross things out. I can underline. So if I wanted to underline certain words, I can do that and I can choose what color. You can also do squiggly underline. So there's all different types of tools. You can create shapes. So I can create boxes. You can do circles, there's clouds. You can create arrows that point to certain things. Uh, you've also got a pencil tool. So if you wanted to draw or an eraser tool, you can create your own sticky notes. So I can create a sticky note here. I can type something in for the students. So you see, I just typed in uh, a, a little note there. And I can move that. I can close it here and it will still be there. Um, I can add in call outs. There's text box. I can make a whole area look like it was highlighted. So if I wanted to highlight this whole area, you'll see it highlights just where I created the box. And then if I decide I want to hide the annotations, I can just click on the eyeball and you'll notice they disappear. So if I wanted to put this up on the screen, I could you know, hide what I want the students to see. And then when I want to reveal it, I can just click on the eye and then it will show them all the things that I wanted them to see. And just like before, I can click on this tool and I can also go in and add in any text here. And again, like before, I can change this font just like I would in a Word document. I can bold it, I can change the size. So I really have a lot of control over a PDF uh, that I wouldn't have normally had without a uh, PDF element. Now, if I wanna share this with my students, I can do it a couple different ways. I can either email it directly to them or I can send this to Google Drive. I can upload it there and then either share it with them or I can put it in Google Classroom. As many of you know, I really like tools that you can use both in the classroom as well as in a distance learning setting. And PDF Element has so many different uses that I really love this tool. And you can check it out yourself at pdf.wondershare.com. And if you're using PDF Element, please let me know how you're using it in the comments section below. And if you haven't subscribed to the EdTech Show, please take a second, click on that subscribe button, click on those notification bells so that you get notified every time there's a new video. And if you haven't followed me yet on Twitter, please give me a follow at Dan Spada and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the EdTech Show. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.